What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and since I did the last piston engine, I know a lot of people are probably like, oh my god, it's another piston engine video, but I, when I did the last piston engine, I, uh, you know, I, I mentioned the comment that it's a, it's, it was a three speed piston engine using two pistons on each cylinder. And, uh, you know, it had three different speeds because of that, and that was just using 2-bit binary. If you expand it from 2-bits to 3-bits, you can actually go from a 3-speed engine to a 7-speed engine, or an 8-speed if you want to call the off position one of the speeds. But you have 0 through 7, and uh, really that works with binary. So, before we jump into these engines and look at, uh, you know, the engines on a car and... Uh, just kind of running, yeah, different stages of how we built that. I wanted to sort of explain how, how binary works and how you can use binary in order to, you know, have multivariable things. And it's really quite awesome. And I encourage you, if you're interested, you can look up all the different binary tables online. But binary really works on, on the power of two. So your first bit would be your one bit, you see. And this is our one light. So we're going to count the number of lights that's on at each point in time. So right now, we'd be at the zero position. All the switches are off and all the lights are off. Now, this is our one bit. Our next bit is two times that, which is the two bit. And our next bit is four times that. And using different combinations of these three bits, you can actually get every single number. So for example, if we wanted to illustrate what the number one would be in binary, we just hit this first one and it would be a one. Now, of course, I am kind of silly and I did these backwards because uh, it should actually be like four, then two, then one, not one, then two, then four. Uh, but regardless, let's just pretend you're reading from right to left today. So that would be your one bit. You can see we've got one light on. And then when we switch over to the two bit, it turns on this second bit. So you'd have one zero as your, as your light. So the number one in binary is one, and then one zero is the second one. And then your third one would be two plus one, so one, one. And that gives you, you can see, three lights total, which is equivalent to three, the third position. And then your fourth bit would be just the fourth one, which gives you the number four, so just one, zero, zero. And then your fifth bit would be 101, because now we've got 4 plus 1, which makes 5. And then your sixth bit would be 110, so 4 plus 2 plus 0 gives you 6. And then your seventh bit would, of course, be all three of them all, which would be 4 plus 2 plus 1. And if we expand this one other level to a fourth bit, uh, your fourth bit would be 8, and then you could go up to 0 through 15. And again, using the same sort of addition, when you get to this seventh position here, then you add the 8 onto it, and then you repeat the pattern starting over. If we take pistons, and we have three different pistons, at three different speeds. So one has to be at one speed, one has to be at double that speed, and one has to be double the previous speed. And so if we take three pistons like this, and we can check, and so I sort of figured this looks pretty close to, to a binary type system. So it seems like this one on the very close end here is set to a speed of two ticks. Uh, it seems to be half the speed of this one here, which is set to four which seems to be half the speed of this one at the very end, which is set to six. And the only reason I say that is because I, I kind of look at where they're positioned when the one reaches the end point, the other one's almost halfway, and that sort of gives us incremental speed. So of course, all we need to do now is stack three pistons, hook them into some OR gates, and then hook them into an engine. And so that's what we've done here. So each one of these cylinders has three stacked pistons. One's at a speed of one, one's at a speed of three, and one's at a speed of five. So a little bit different speeds from these, but again, if we if we were to change these down, the ratio seems to stay the same between the speeds. And uh, then we have all those pistons hooked into the sort of distributor of sensors here, which is again, you know, just hooked into a little weird pattern, this red pattern thing on the wheel, but that, uh, on the axle there, sorry, but that detects which sensor needs to trigger which cylinder. And then of course, the binary bits here, one, two, and three binary bits. So for one value, two value, and four value, they just feed into these AND gates at the top, which in turn feeds which pistons need to run. So if we hit this on switch number one, you can see there we get only the first binary bit active, which is activating the first bit in each one of these in sequence with the sensors. And so the engine will actually spin relatively slowly, but it's very consistent. It'll it'll constantly spin. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to get going just to build up a little bit of momentum. The pistons, depending on where they end, kind of have a little bit of a jerk in the beginning, but overall not too bad. And you can see we're spinning at one speed. Now we, of course, can switch over to two. And again, you can see a little bit of that jerkiness, but uh, once it starts doing a few rotations, that jerkiness smooths out quite nicely. And now you can see we're spinning at a speed of two. And this is using that second bit, so the one zero position basically and it's activating each second bit as the sensors go and then of course we can switch to three and now you can see there three activates both the first and second bit 
and it does in fact spin faster than two. I did test all these to make sure the speeds actually do show a difference, and they all do, which is quite awesome. And so you've got, you see there, the two bit is activating one one on each one as it goes by. And then we can go to the fourth speed, which is just that fourth bit, or that third bit, sorry, but the fourth value. And then of course, number five, which is the one zero one bit. And that activates the first piston and the fourth piston. And again, you can see there, still accelerating even more. And then the 110, and that's the fourth plus two, which gives you six, so the sixth speed. And you can see we're accelerating even faster. And then finally, all three of them with the seven. And again, that jerkiness in the beginning, but once it gets past it, you can see there, we are going the fastest possible speed. And it's really quite awesome. Um, I, I thought about going even further and doing a, a fourth bit and making it 16 speeds, but the problem I had is uh, the piston mechanics can only spin so fast and it gets harder in the higher speeds to distinguish. Like, I, I originally sped these pistons up to try and see, you know, how fast it could go, but once you speed the pistons up, then you get to these last couple of speeds, and you don't really notice much of a difference uh, in, in how fast it's accelerating, and I think it's just because of the, the physical limit on the piston speed plus the, uh, the reaction uh, time to the whole circuit and all that. So this is the exact same engine, but instead of having it on a 7-switch system, We've hooked it into the uh, piston here with seven binary bits and a throttle and a cruise control, of course. So right now I've got it set on the first cruise position, but uh, we can accelerate that to the second cruise position there. And we can just, you know, turn the cruise on there. And now we're in second gear. And the cool thing about this cruise control compared to the other cruise controls I've done is this one actually behaves like a real cruise control. If you hold the accelerator past the cruise position, it'll continue to accelerate the engine. And then when you let off the accelerator, it'll still go back to a cruise position. You can see there, quite awesome. For some reason, it always wants to rest on four though. I think I screwed up a circuit somewhere. Must have screwed up this maybe? Yeah, I totally am missing this. See that, that's the problem. You see this has to, there we go. See, I totally missed that little switch. And now, there we go. Now we're set to cruise on three. Ah ha ha, see you have the logic block reversed in the wrong direction. But anyways, you can see there, it behaves like a normal cruise control now. And uh, as we accelerate past the position, we can go faster. But when you let off the throttle, it will resume at whatever cruise position you were set at before until you turn off the cruise control. So it's kind of nice. Uh, cars have the ability to resume acceleration while you're cruising. And uh, I thought this thing needed it as well. And so, of course, you know, having a, a seven-speed piston engine is pretty cool. But, uh, you know, it was funny, someone made a comment in one of the last videos, which is like, we always try in Scrap Mechanic to make a piston car. So originally we tried making bearings and turning bearings into pistons, and now we're trying to turn pistons back into bearings. But, uh, of course, if we take this entire engine now, and we throw the cruise control system up top, and then we mount it into a car with an axle, which goes to a little bit of a uh, universal type joint, which then goes down to this axle, which then, of course, has mounted suspension using pistons just to help give it that ride height um we can in fact make a seven speed car now i did originally put four wheel drive on this thing so i put the axle extending out the front as well going to another uh sort of gearing system here with a forward and reverse and then i had it go through two cv joints down to each of the wheels and then had the steering and all that but uh, it became a lag monster. And this is already a little bit laggy. I think the number of pistons and bearings and all the collisions and stuff that's happening uh, really just starts to get it laggier. But uh, so I, I got rid of that and made it just rear wheel drive, which is a simple back end there. But uh, you can see there, it does drive relatively easily over all the terrain. And uh, we can just uh, hold on here. Let's see. There we go. We can just put it in, like cruise control one even. And uh, the nice thing about these piston engines is they're so consistent with such a consistent power that even in, you know, the first gear, the the speed of the, or the slope of the hill, sorry, really doesn't make any difference. I mean, you can hit a rock here, and it just, it just drives right over the rock. The amount of power, and you can see there that suspension just flexing in the back, the, the amount of power these piston cars have is unreal. And then, of course, we can keep our cruise on one, and we can accelerate past one, and this one's got the same screwed up four system as well. So I will upload this car to the workshop. Again, it's not really much of a car. Um, like it really doesn't look like a car obviously it, it looks just kind of like a skeleton vehicle but I will upload this to the workshop and uh, I will also upload the piston engine that has the um, the uh, the switches on it the seven position switches I'm not gonna upload the one with the whole cruise control mechanism on the top uh, if you want that you can just rip this car apart 
and uh, take the cruise control mechanism off of it. The engine itself spins at seven different speeds, but sometimes the back gear doesn't, you know, always collide properly at seven different speeds. So just like the previous car, we can hit that two switch and flick it in reverse, and that suspension just sort of helps absorb any of the shocks. But sometimes the piston engine spins too fast and it skips gears, and uh, it's not really that cool. It doesn't work very well. Sometimes it just skips, and you can hear it just kind of, you know, banging around. So it doesn't always give you a good differential in speed at the higher gears, and uh, it does make it very difficult if you want to try and make the vehicle go faster. But overall, the climbing power on these kind of vehicles is just insane. So again, let's go into this. Man, first gear is really slow. I mean, we could make a really good stable AI vehicle though with this because I mean you could always just I guess take an electric engine and make it drive really slow but it really does feel like these piston engines are just much smoother I don't know if it's like even downhill you see here we're not accelerating anything it's keeping itself at a constant speed no matter what but uh, overall I'm I love piston powered cars I mean they're they're so cool in scrap mechanic and uh, the fact that you could make this kind of mechanism work is just great but uh, make sure you guys post in the comments down below if you would like me to try and do something with this thing I want to do something really big and industrial uh, like I would love to use a piston powered engine to run a ship propeller but there's zero reason for that because the ship propeller doesn't actually power anything and so let me know what you guys think uh, what would be a cool thing for it I don't want to try and make a car with it but uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any more crazy piston engines I just really wanted to prove uh, how the binary system would work for a piston engine because I know uh, I mentioned that in the previous video and the previous video was a three speed engine using two bits of binary so I wanted to expand it to three bits and show that it does in fact work you can in fact get seven different speeds and uh, just get a much more stable car and when you set the cruise control it's you know much more tuned of a position you have seven different places to pick from instead of three different speeds to pick from so when you drive you do get a much more you know sort of responsive cruise control it feels like you have much more intermediate speeds but make sure you guys hit that like button down below hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for more cool scrap mechanic stuff and uh, of course post your suggestions for other builds and other cool things you'd like to see on the channel and uh, I am going to do a few more logic tutorials I know a lot of people have been asking me about logic tutorials and uh, I am going to start up a logic tutorial type series sometime relatively soon uh, within the next month uh, because I would like to start just starting at the very very beginning of some of the basic logic stuff And I know a lot of you guys uh, probably won't need to watch it And you probably won't need to watch until we get into some of the more advanced things and the advanced concepts But I do want to start covering some more of these basic setups and just what you can do with some simple logic You know with one or two gates or uh, you know a couple of timers How you can make some crazy stuff happen and then go all the way into stuff like this where you can make cruise controls and stuff like that for your car now with that logic series, I'm not going to do any sort of glitched logic stuff. Everything I will do in that will be in vanilla. There are a thousand ways to do different logic things, but I am going to cover it in vanilla. So make sure you guys hit those buttons down below. And uh, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.